Hi there, Juleika here. Before we get started, I want to invite you, yes, you, to be a guest on the show. If you're an adult and a child of immigrants, and they could be from anywhere in the world, really, I'd love to talk to you about the conversations that are necessary but challenging, especially right about now. So whatever you're all getting into, I want to know about it. Politics, money, holidays, marriage, kids, everything. So send me an email directly at juleika at lantiguawilliams.com and we'll get you on the show. I can't wait to hear from you. Hi, everybody. Amy's with us today. Amy grew up in a Puerto Rican family where having children was an unspoken expectation. As an adult, she decided not to have kids. So when her mom started making plans around her future grandchildren, Amy realized she needed to be upfront about her decision. Let's get into it. My name is Amy Baez. I am a pediatric occupational therapist living in Miami, Florida. And I'm originally from New Jersey. I am the youngest of three children, and both of my parents were born in Puerto Rico. Growing up, I called my parents mom and dad. So as I was growing up, I felt like I was a pretty typical kid. I think because I was the youngest, I always assumed that I would have children. And uh, everybody in my family had children. It was just a normal thing. But when I was in high school, my sister had a child while she was in high school. And obviously that was challenging for her to do, but it really kind of scared me off a bit <laughs> from having, from having children anytime soon. And I think the language in my family really shifted as well. Now it was more of, Take your time getting married. Don't rush to have children. Travel the world. I also was dealing with several health challenges through the years. And working with children, especially children with disabilities, I realized how hard it was to raise children and how much energy it took and how exhausted I was at the end of every day. And as Things became a little bit more challenging for me going into my 30s and into my late 30s and then into my 40s. I thought, I don't know if I can really physically do this. I feel like part of the decision to have children is knowing that you have someone who's depending on you. That was something that I felt like I did not have enough energy and strength to do. And so I started to think maybe this wasn't going to happen for me. Also, I was in a relationship with someone who wasn't exactly part of their plan to have children. So it was okay. It became okay for me. It's hard to make that decision. I had little clues for myself. I had times when I felt like, um, should I choose to consider IVF treatments or, um, you know, storing eggs or going on a great trip to Europe for two months? And I picked the trip to Europe. And so those are the kinds of things that kind of made me think, well, maybe there's still other things that are more important to me. And I would share those moments with her my mom, but I never said it directly. About five years ago, when she started to talk about her retirement, how she wanted to spend time with her future grandchildren, you know, when I come to Miami, oh, I might look at houses. That's when I started to tell her, you know, I don't know if you should be planning your life around my life because I don't know if I'm going to really have children and if I'm even going to be here. I think part of it was that I wanted her to make sure she was making decisions that were for her, you know, and things that were going to make her happy, 
not necessarily basing her happiness on what I was doing. I feel like when I first told her that she took it fairly well, was a bit shocked. I didn't expect those words to come out of my mouth, but then she's been dealing with unusual things coming out of my mouth (laughs) for years. But I also feel like she was maybe a little bit sad, but didn't want to say that. And luckily, she already has four grandchildren. (laughs) So that was really helpful in my, in my eyes to know that she's not depending on me for grandchildren. It was more about where she was going to live. It's not that I didn't feel like I didn't want to take care of her. Like I understand that role will likely fall on me as she gets older, but I didn't feel like that time was yet. And so I didn't want that decision to be based on what I was doing because I still feel like I had a lot of life to live and I didn't know where that was going to take me. I felt like that was a really important decision in my life and I didn't want her life to be influencing my decision and vice versa. I really needed it to be separate. How to Talk to Mommy and Papi About Anything is supported by First Republic Bank. I've talked about being a First Republic Bank customer before. Let me ask you, when was the last time you had really memorable service at a bank? When someone made you feel like a VIP, they remembered your name, cared about your goals, and anticipated your needs. My First Republic banker, Lisa, does exactly that. Like me, as a First Republic customer, you'll work with a personal banker who will be your single point of contact, there to guide you through everything from switching banks to planning your financial future. Get started right now. Visit firstrepublic.com to learn more. That's firstrepublic.com. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Juleka here. I'm so excited to tell you about LWC Studios' new show, How to Talk to High Achievers About Anything. We'll hear from Black and brown professionals who have reached levels of excellence that sometimes come with great personal and professional challenges. People who are looking for ways to keep leveling up. In 15-minute bi-weekly episodes, host Stevan Lewis, a licensed psychotherapist and coach, offers feedback and strategies on a range of topics like the pressures of being an entrepreneur, the struggle to stay motivated, and the cost of fitting in. With empathy, candor, and a penchant for spot-on analogies, Stevan helps all of us high achievers navigate obstacles and figure out how to define success in our own terms. Here's the trailer for how to talk to high achievers about anything. The first episode drops April 4th. What's up, everybody? I'm Stevan Lewis, a licensed psychotherapist. I specialize in working with individuals who reach levels of excellence that often come with great personal and professional challenges. I'm hosting a new show from LWC Studios called How to Talk to High Achievers About Anything. We'll hear stories from individuals striving to do big things. Who do I think I am to think that I could, also being a woman, also being Black, get in this industry and be in this industry and be able to support myself in this industry? People who are facing roadblocks. You know, when you keep getting the door closed, It's like, what is it about me? And who, just like you and I, are facing challenges from others and from within ourselves. I'm a high achiever. Things are supposed to come easy for me. And if this is hard, then maybe it's not my lane. I'll offer feedback and strategies so that together, we can all figure out how to achieve on our own terms. Subscribe or follow How to Talk to High Achievers About Anything from LWC Studios. And connect with us on Twitter at Talk to Achievers. Deciding whether to have children or not is such an incredibly personal and tough decision. Amy's story makes me think about how, for many first gens, it can feel as if our parents are relying on us, on our lives and on our decisions for their own happiness. Pressure much? What can we as first gens do to communicate to our loved ones that 
we get to decide what makes us happy? And conversely, how can we encourage them to do the same? To help us figure it out, I called in an expert. I'm Dr. Maritza Mikulich. Um, I'm a marriage and family therapist working with individuals and families as well as couples. And I'm Spanish speaking as well. So same question. You've been here before. What did you hear when you listened to Amy's story? Yeah, you know, I heard lots of conflicting thoughts and feelings um, when she was sort of processing through some of her family ties. And so there's lots of expectations that I heard. I also heard just, you know, as she aged, right? She says her 20s, her 30s, and her 40s. And, you know, her beliefs started to change. Yeah, so I won't actually pick up on that because to me, I mean, this was very familiar to me being a daughter and having grown up with the traditional expectations of a daughter. I heard I'm expected to have children, so my mother will have grandchildren. I am the youngest, so I will be expected to also be the one to take care of her. And she sort of seems accepting and resigned to that fact. Um, I also heard I'm expected to sacrifice my other desires, like traveling, being a professional, growing in my career, to have children. So let's talk a little bit about, in your practice, When you encounter these decisions, which are really big decisions that differ from the norm, what are some of the approaches that you guide your clients to so that they can sort of ease the shock or ease the pain of the decision when they tell their parents? Yeah, um, I really try to validate and normalize um, and empower them to really believe in their decisions independently from their family. You know, as grown adults, um, you know, you want to be able to make these decisions without so many influences in your life and really do it for you. And I think something that really stood out to me is like she transitioned into this acceptance, right? She said, this wasn't going to happen for me. It became okay for me. Like she started accepting, like, I'm not going to have kids. I just need that to translate and communicate that over to to my mom. I found it really interesting that one of the reasons that sort of accelerated her telling her mom was that her mom was beginning to make plans about the children that she was not planning to have, you know, that Amy was not planning to have. And so she felt like, okay, I've got to tell her because she's making all all these plans around something that's simply not going to happen. How do we handle that? I mean, that seems like so much pressure. That's a lot of pressure. I mean, having children is, is a big responsibility. And then having that pressure by someone that you care about so much, like your mom, right? You don't want to make her feel bad. You don't want to make her feel sad, which she did. But that's the thing. It's like, I think she needs to be honest, right? She needs to be honest with herself. And then she needs to translate and be honest with that other person. And so I think with that comes like those boundaries that she she knew she needed to establish through more open and honest communication of like, what do I really want? You know, despite that pressure, I need to be my true self here and I need to let her know, plan something for you. Yes. I think it's great that Amy's like, you've got to make choices for you and you've got to live your life and your choices for you, not for me, because I don't even know what that looks like yet. So isn't this called codependency in your yes, circles? It is. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And I would say in the Hispanic culture, you know, a lot of the time people are like, no, but that's just how it is. So I'm going to ask it really bluntly, but why is codependency so bad? Help us understand why a system that is like water to fish for us can be damaging and is something that we should actually break away from. Yeah. The thing is with codependency, it becomes more one-sided, 
right? Like both people don't end up really wanting the same thing. It's just not being talked about because there's this respect that happens in a culture, like a Hispanic culture and Puerto Rican culture that exists, that you respect your elders. So sometimes your wishes, desires, and, you know, needs, they just kind of get dismissed or you're not as, you know, prioritized as the other person. So breaking away uh, from that cycle is important because you get to also make choices. Once you have some distance and create distance in a family and realize, well, we don't have to be so intertwined. I can have some goals and dreams and desires of living my life the way I want. So how can we help our parents prepare for the fact that maybe we don't want to take on that role? I think what Amy did was great. You know, she had some conversations and moments that she was able to open up to her mom and say, here is how I feel about this. So start there, you know, and really be vulnerable enough to share even more. Go a step beyond by just saying, here is what I have been thinking about lately. I have been thinking more and more that this, you know, responsibility of having a child depend on me might not be for me anymore. And it's something I've thought about long and hard. And it's not something that I want. And here's why, you know, although you don't have to give the why, but you right. Know. But it helps to give <laughs> it the helps. why. So yeah. one of the whys that she gave was her physical health because she saw how working with children, especially children with special needs, was really, really hard physically for her. I mean, taking care of young children, it is exhausting. I have children. I adore my children. But definitely earlier in my life, I was on the fence about it. And I'm the oldest daughter. And I knew I knew very clearly because she reminded me from the minute I like graduated college that my mother was expecting grandchildren from me. So the, my last question has to do with once you identify that you're in a codependent relationship and that you are the one who's bearing the burden, um, besides having conversations, what are some of the more tangible ways that you can establish those boundaries? Yeah, When you speak about boundaries, you have to remind yourself that these boundaries are for you, for your mental health. And so sometimes that does mean taking a step back if um, mom continues to pressure the same thing over and over again. Sometimes it means setting a very, you know, verbal agreement out there. Like, mom, if I don't bring this up to you, you know, then we don't need to talk about this um, because these are your concerns and not something I'm thinking about. So sometimes it's being very clear with those and making sure the other person understands what you're saying. Oof. I know that's tough. I'm just imagining any scenario which I would say to my mom, but that's your concern, not my concern. <laughs> right, right. And I think some of this has to do with tactic because then, you know, you get into like others taking it personal, feeling bad, and then conflict arises from that. So the other thing, okay, this is for real, for real, my last question. I've observed not only my family, but in other families that sometimes expectations that are cultural, social, are sometimes treated as rights that other people have. Like they're entitled to certain things from you. Yeah. I see it all the time. I see it all the time. There's always people thinking they have a right to a lot of things. And we're talking about uh, burying a child. And that means your body. Yeah. And then, yeah, who's going to get up in the middle of the night, right? (laughs) Diapers. Yeah, yeah. Who's going to, you know, do all the day, minute things, like the things you have to think about. So Amy has the right to her body. Amy has the right to say what she needs to say. Um, Amy has all these rights and she has the right to change her mind, Make one decision and then say, you know what? Never mind. 
I just got validation and confirmation within myself that this isn't for me. And that's really what she did with her years of experience with life and just relationships and health and career. It made her come to a realization. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. it, it takes a long time, though. It, it really, t- I'm in my mid 40s and I am finally feeling truly empowered to say no, to say no thank you, to say, oh, no, that's really not for me. Like, I don't even try to even be polite and say, I'll get back to you. I'm just like, nope, thanks. And you have a right to not explain yourself, actually. Right. You not have to give excuses and explanations, even when it's your mom. Oh, yeah. That's tough. Yeah. yeah it is. Well, Maritza, always, always so happy to have you here. Thank you for coming back. Of course. Thank you so much, Jalika. All right. Here's what we learned from Maritza today. Be vulnerable. When communicating a personal decision to a loved one, start by being open about the thoughts and feelings you have around the decision. You don't owe anyone an explanation, but sharing your reasons can help others understand and ultimately accept your choices. Speak loud and clear. If you've made a decision that involves no one else but yourself, Don't be afraid to point that out and be blunt if you need to. And remember, exercise your right to decide. The only person entitled to your decisions is you. Don't let the fear of hurting someone's feelings or disappointing someone distract you from what you know is best for you. How to Talk to Mommy and Papi About Anything is an original production of LWC Studios. Virginia Lora is the show's producer. Kojin Tashiro is our mixer. Manuela Bedoya is our marketing lead. I'm the creator, Julie Calantigua. On Twitter and Instagram, we're at Talk to Mommy Papi. Bye, everybody. Same place next week.